cities or, or try and uh, give a brief but give an English. Uh, I love to speak in Somali, obviously all this uh, tend to be uh, a little bit more on, on the English side. Uh, I am glad to be here today and uh, supporting a young uh, African Somali uh, young girl writer. Uh, to be witnessing this event is a great for me. I've met Amal about two and a half weeks ago uh, on the book fair in Hotel Delta. And I was really uh, amazed by her courage, tenacity. I obviously started writing at a very young age. Uh, I was persuaded by buying the book on the day, but also after reading the book, I had to come here uh, on this book launch. I have my version signed book already, but I have to be here to support the mouth and young girls and African writers uh, uh, in, in the future. Uh, the story of the book, obviously, it's self-telling. Our fathers were refugees, our grandfathers were refugees. So we had experienced, uh, at some point, refugee life and know what it's all about. And all, also we know that the people from the refugee background who made it to another land where they're not permitted to learn, to adapt, to integrate, and to become successful. And I want to encourage uh, Amal and everyone else, especially I have a daughter myself, so I'm very keen on uh, inspiring our young girls and, uh, and our future daughters. And people like Amal experience that you face in Africa and everywhere else. So I want to congratulate Amal and I want to thank everyone else here who came to support Amal today. So, yeah. I appreciate everyone being here, you know, every word of encouragement is encouraging because as a mother too, I've got my daughter here too, and I've got my grandson is here too. <laughs> so thank you. I just want to welcome um, our African Union 6 region who helped us uh, to invite uh, and give a chance uh, to our Amal here, our young Arthur. And uh, I'm going to invite uh, Ambassador Sandra to manage to uh, welcome our Dr. Kalu, who's our, our leader for African Union 6 region. Thank you. I want to say when I thank you everybody for being here. And um, this is such a precious moment. It is just, um, it's just filled with heart. You know, when I, when I was told about this amazing young lady, I couldn't do, or the African Union could do nothing but help her. Because that's what we're all about, is really to see our young people thrive and survive. And I was just so amazed at her story, the fact that she started writing so young. And just her tenacity, it's just, it's mind-boggling. And I'm just so proud of her. And um, I'm, I'm, you know, um, when we think about the continent, we think about the young people who, they have the largest, we have, the African continent has the largest um, population of young people. And a lot of them are struggling. A lot of them don't know what to do or where to go. But there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Yes. There is hope. And, and the thing is to know that we are behind you. I just came back from Ghana. We want our young people to thrive and to survive. It doesn't matter whether they're on the continent or whether they're here. But we want you to guide me forward. Take chances. Don't wait for somebody to give you. Take it. Take it. Our youth director yesterday said, take it. So I'm echoing him today, and I'm saying, take it. Because I see a beautiful young lady beside me who has taken it. And this is just the beginning for her. And we're just proud. We're just, you know, just to have the opportunity to help. And we want to help everybody. We want to help all of you young people. So please, dream. Dream big. Don't stop. Start. 
Make sure you have direction. Get mentorship. You're here in Canada where it is all possible. Don't care what anybody says. Don't care about the color of your skin. Don't care about your religion. Don't, don't let anything like that stop you. Look in your heart and follow your heart. Follow your heart. And I just, I'm just privileged to be here. And there I am, you're just... I believe most of us here, we have an ancestral history of displacement an ancestral history of being a refugee, you see? That's what I'm talking about. So, in my book, Shades of Hope, I talk more on, uh, mostly on refugees and the challenges they go through in accessing quality education. And when we talk about quality education, I mean uh, limited educational opportunities, the interrupted education and language barriers, because let's say, uh, I hope this never happens to anyone, but if our, uh, war was to break out right now and in my book page seven you find this family that uh, find themselves in a war-torn country and they want to flee but they ask their father where they want us to go and he tells them let this journey lead us to a sanctuary that means we travel and when where we see peace wherever we're going to find peace that's where you're going to settle. No so imagine you just go, go, and then you're just a, a grade nine student, then you find yourself in the middle of China, where all the lessons are taught in Chinese. So the, imagine the life you're going to live at that moment. You'll feel left out, you'll feel discriminated, but if you are not being discriminated, just because you are different, yeah? So, and yeah, mental health and trauma, the psychological impact and the lack of uh, health, uh, mental health support. Because right now, if uh, you are in a refugee camp where everyone is new, where everyone just flee the conflict in trying to find peace and you are mentally traumatized, who is going to mentor you? Everyone there is mentally traumatized, right? We need to be included, guided, and empowered to become champions. He has to, he has, he has to leave school to provide for his sisters, and his sisters need to go to school. And I don't know why the boys are laughing for me, and I'm advocating for you guys. <laughs> so in my book, chapter five, uh, page five, the last paragraph, it says, attaining and maintaining manhood to master the required, actually it's marked. And it's a boy who marked it, he was reading his copy, and he's seated in here, I don't want to mention. So, attaining and maintaining man to master their careers, and from there, we're going to take a little bit of break. People can come and get Break. Right. I was once a refugee. The story is in the book that my daughter wrote. Is exactly the one. All of us. Only that she was able to get the education. 13 years, 20 books for Africa. At 23, we have the book published. That is the export of the world. I've seen, I've written, I've read, I've traveled. I'm lucky to have traveled 65 countries in the last 10 years. So there is nothing under the sun that you will say that I have not heard about, or have not seen, or have not smelled or touched. But this story of a 13 year old girl writing, it was not in that story. So I congratulate her. <laughs> On behalf of my organization, we are the CEO. We are going to meet part of our yearly uh, income to the foundation. Being a father myself, I don't even know how that happened, you know. 
I also have a, a, a young daughter, you know, who is a... Uh, How old is she now? Yeah, you know, it's a, a, a busy count. But, but the point I'm trying to get is that I started to impact everything after music. I never, even when they were two years old, I never spoke. You know how you see little kids and you want to speak when they call babies talk? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma 
كستوى دنيا نم عدي نم عدي سوارين وكي سنة برا داكيتي يد النغمة هي مرحبتنا <تصفيق> نوري <تصفيق> نرشي ادو يدا ادو يدا عديقونا نتاقي دكا نبر هقارسي قوف كالانا هنافي كل غدان 